Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on December 21st, 2023. It's been a while since we've done one of these here at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do a daily lectionary reading and talk about it a little bit and uh, say some prayers and hopefully um, complete this week before Christmas on Monday and all of the different things that are going on, but it's good to remember to be in God's word. And so let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for the ways that you continue to care for us. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to speak with us through your word. Uh, grateful for this opportunity to uh, have this chance to read again and to have this time. So we thank you and praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting today with Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me, the torrents of perdition assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering around him, his canopy thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him there broke through his clouds hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high. He took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He recompensed me. And our next psalm is 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture text today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 17. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, 
Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you up from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. The evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down and your with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these things and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. We turn to Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through three, chapter 3, verse 8. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, this spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is sure. And our gospel lesson today from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has bowed down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. 
And back to our psalm, Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the, lo the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, with the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. And our final psalm today is Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion, and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Uh, I think I'm getting a lot of like protection, providence, you know, the first Psalm that we read, Psalm 18, and then the last Psalm, Psalm mm -hmm. 62, a lot of repeated themes in there about being a fortress, um, being the one that provides and protects. And um, obviously both of these, well, maybe not obviously, but both of these Psalms are uh, attributed to David. And I wonder if, um, you know, one was kind of at the beginning of his life, and maybe one was a little later on in his life. Uh, but how they sort of bookend even that Second Samuel passage where David is like, I want to build you a house of cedar, but God talks about, I've never asked for one. I've right. always been in the wilderness, always traveling with the people, always being around with it. And, and I wonder if there's something there, like... David wants to be in a nice, secure place, and he thinks like a physical building is going to be it. And he wants to honor God, and he wants right. to build him a temple. And that's not a bad thing to want to do that, to honor him and things. But and I, ultimately, a temple was there. And ultimately, it a temple just wasn't right? David's to do. Yeah, right. And he wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't in God's timing there. Right. And I just kind of wonder, like, you know, God's like, oh, oh I'm, I'm good. <laughs> like I don't need that doesn't to be elevate protected. his status right. by having a building that like, doesn't. I don't need to be protected. I'm the one who protects you, and so it's yeah, a little interesting, a little interesting yeah. little thing there. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. You can tell we probably yeah. haven't done this for a while. We're just I trying know. to think. Like, no, what, what I know, but I, I know, but I am. A, you know, my my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. What right. was? Yeah, what was David trying to do that God was not allowing him to do? What lesson did he have? But like yeah. you said, um, I don't need that from you, David. I'm not asking for that. Right. So you know, I think. Um, Popping back over to Titus, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was obviously Paul instructing Titus to uh, continue to teach people what's consistent with sound doctrine and how there's this like tension between people who believed that, uh, you know, that you had to follow all of the Jewish laws as opposed to being obedient to what. 
Christ had called them to do. And so there was just tension between who were the people that were you know, responsible in the churches and, and who were the people that were just rabble rousers and things. And so um, you know, even Paul's admonition to Titus to, to trust that it's God's grace that transforms us, that there's nothing we can do to earn these things. In fact, we were once just like all the people that we're trying to minister to. You know, we were foolish, we were this, we were that. And gosh, maybe maybe pastors should read this letter every day. <laughs> well, and that's actually what struck me out of this passage. When we were reading this, that's what, for we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another, but with the goodness and the loving kindness of God, our Savior appeared, not because of our righteousness, mm -hmm. but what he had done. And so what struck me about that was this recognition, and I think, like you said, maybe we should read this more often, when we are interacting with people in the world, and especially like right now with Christmas, you know, and going to a store, anybody that's been to a store in the last week, week and a half knows that it's just crazy. Um, and so, but when people act in ways that are maybe less than desirable, but um, when they are, you know, go back up there, you know, speak evil to no one, when people are speaking terribly, when people are quarreling, when people are not gentle and they're harsh, when there is no courtesy for no for no one, when people are acting in that way and, and we get so self-righteous, you know, or indignant about it, why do we expect people to act better than that if they don't know and if they mm -hmm. haven't been you know um, the good news hasn't been shared but so I put it in the context of the store but yes people that that we're ministering to when they when they are harsh and, and quarrel and they and they do push back like why would they not mm -hmm. they they don't have the good news they don't you know and the world certainly does not stand right. by the gospel the world does not work um you know empire does not work the way that god's kingdom works right and so i think when we are looking at ourselves as people who can minister to others and not not as pastors but as christians as mm -hmm. followers of christ everyone has that calling as we are ministering to people that um don't look like christians right they don't look like christians and at some point we didn't either. And we still, there are still times that we are foolish or disobedient. I mean, we still fall into that. Even that's with knowing what we know. Right. Um, and so I, reading this, I thought, hmm, interacting with people, how do we look at people when we interact with them? How does that change the way that we respond to people? Right. Right. How does that um, affect um yeah, how we respond to people. And I think, for me personally, I think that um, whenever you do interact or you do come into, you come into a situation where you have someone that's pushing back or, or whatever, that's, um, if we revert to that or if we respond in kind, we've undone, um, you know, how can we share a message of gentleness and kindness and love and compassion if we look like that. Right. And so I right. think that that is something, uh, that's what spoke to me when we read this. Right. No, I, I'm very much in agreement with what you just said. I think uh, how do we demonstrate that we really do believe that Jesus has given us the best gift possible? Jesus has given us himself, as it says, you know. Verse 14, it, he it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. And it's even our own capacity to do good deeds is a gift from God. Right. And so, you know, when you are given a gift, are you, like, do you get all you know, bowed up and proud about the gift that you've received? Or is it like, yeah, look how awesome I am because I've been purified and I've been redeemed and curses on all you other people. No, it should actually make you more humble. Right. 
because as, Ty, as Paul says here, you know, it's like we were once all this way. Now we have the capacity to do better. Mm -hmm. So we need to do better. Like, you know, we've got that choice daily before us. You know, people talk about, you know, do I have the capacity? Yes, you've got the choice every day. Choose every to be day. kind. Choose to be gracious. Choose to be, um, you know, wise and not speaking evil and avoiding the quarreling. And we're given opportunities every day. Every, every, day. Day. every day. Some every days day. you go, I will try again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Some days we'll try again tomorrow. But that, right. there is grace. Right. Right. Uh, we are being renewed regularly by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hmm. And then, you know, just looking at Luke really quickly, obviously just the miracle of the incarnation. And, uh, you know, I think there are, you know, mythical stories of, you know, God's being born or whatever, but do we ever get stories of, well, the mother went to go talk to her cousin and the two of them were reflecting upon, what does this even mean? Like, right. it's so, like, so amazed that, um, you know, Elizabeth, you know, Mary goes to meet Elizabeth and, and John, uh, who becomes the Baptist, you know, there in Elizabeth leaps for joy mm -hmm. and, and, and Elizabeth, filled by the Holy Spirit, recognizes what's going on here. It's like, right. oh, wait. It's like, here comes the mother of my Lord. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, and they just kind of reflect upon just how amazing that is. And Mary sings that amazing song, you know, that we know as the Magnificat, based mm -hmm. on that line, my soul magnifies the Lord. Um, and how so much of that is even a reminder of what, God has already done throughout all the generations. She even references Abraham and his descendants forever, that these promises are finally being fulfilled. And that, you know, that's just such a such a miracle. I think around the Christmas season, we can go, oh yeah, Virgin Mary, you know, the birth and all this kind of stuff. But to think about what the implications of it really are, that for Mary it was hugely important. Right. And for us, who live 2,000 years later, who are still living in the reality of Jesus who saves the world. Right. Wow. And he didn't, the story doesn't start when the angel appeared to Mary. Hmm. The story started way back with Abraham hmm. and his ancestors. And so this, this love story with hmm. God, it, it doesn't start in that moment that God, you know, proclaims he's sending his son. It started so much sooner than that. And I mean, he is mm -hmm. orchestrating all of that and all of the things that had to happen and all of the things and all of the people that he was able to use throughout history, even when people did David, you know, when David did all the things that he did. Um, and yet God doesn't turn away and he still continued to use him and fulfill the promises that he had already made. And so mm -hmm. all of those promises are kept for hundreds of years, thousands of years, because they're still being kept. Right. And so, um, yeah, it's... Hmm. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty... Sounds like a good place to wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, God, <laughs> God, is, God is in control. Right. Uh, God is fulfilled and is fulfilling his promises. And... We are called to really live transformed lives because of, because of that. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of these psalms, or I mean, a couple of these verses are going to be used in our Sunday service, and mm -hmm. so you, uh, if you tune into that or, or come in person, you can hear a little bit more about those things. And so I certainly hope you do so. But um, you know, we probably won't have a chance to meet again before Christmas. So I certainly hope everybody has a marvelous Christmas. We do have a couple events on Sunday that we'd love for you to be at. We have a Advent four week four service on Sunday morning at one at ten thirty because one combined service. We have Jingle and Mingle that starts at four o'clock in the mm -hmm. evening here at church in the gym, and then we do have a Christmas Eve candlelight service that starts at five o'clock. Uh, we will not have any formal services on Monday morning for Christmas. Enjoy that time with your family and your friends. Um, try to continue to do the scripture reading. There's mm -hmm. some good scripture reading for Christmas Day. Make that a part of your family tradition. 
and uh, we look forward to um, all those things together. Do you want to close us in a word of prayer? I do, but I want to add one more thing. Oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> there is no Sunday school. There are no Sunday morning connect groups meeting on uh, Sunday morning prior to that single service at 1030. Very good. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll close nice. Close. Prayer. Excellent. Thank yes. You, Gracious Lord, thank you for your words to us today. Thank you um, for this wonderful love story that we have that, um, that you have been writing for generations and that we are invited into that and that we are um, called and commanded to, to help share that story and, and to live into those promises that you offer to us. And I just pray that as we are going through the end of this Advent season as, and as we are coming into Christmas this next week and celebrating uh, the birth of your son and remembering that, that we continue to have open hearts and obedient hearts and that we look forward to um, your coming again with hope and uh, with peace, knowing that the promises that you have given us are true and sure and that your love is steadfast for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye.